Hello, hello. This is Empowered Explant, the podcast helping women around the world ditch their breast implants with confidence. I'm Dana Mosica, board certified health and wellness coach and explant warrior. Breasties, first, today I have a personal update for you. I have a boyfriend. Ah! <laughs> and he is so wonderful and loving and sweet and I'm so in love with him he is the masculine to my feminine and I believe a true gift from God and I'll share more about my relationship as time goes on but I wanted to share this with you now because it is aligned with what we're talking about today you see It is no coincidence that I met this man after my explant surgery. I met this man in the full expression of my natural, most authentically confident, most me self. If you've been rocking with me on this journey since the beginning, which is a while ago now, then you know some of my first YouTube videos are from back when I still had my breast implants when uh, I was talking about breast implant illness and the very beginning of my explant journey. And I was living in Germany with my ex. And then you might have seen me move to LA. We were transitioning our lives from Germany back to the States. And I popped over to Miami to get my explant surgery. And then a few weeks later, everything changed in my life. And I went through a crushing breakup that really damaged my self-esteem. And I talk about that in the first few episodes of the Empowered Explant podcast. But before I went through all of this, (laughs) I went through a decade of being treated poorly by men. I mean, actually, probably my whole life when I like really take inventory and I think about school and I think about Uh, some traumatic things that happened to me as a child and as a teen. I mean, yeah, it's just a part of my history. You know, toxic relationships, abusive relationships, lied to, manipulated, taken for granted. And I don't want a pity party. I actually don't see myself as a victim. An easy target, yes, but... Victim mentality isn't something that really sits with me. I didn't expect or demand better for myself. And so the energy that I was putting out was attracting these kinds of men and this kind of behavior. Especially as I was older, obviously what happened to me as a child, as a teen, you know, those things are are different. But I think as I got older, it was really this this damaged energy that I had inside myself and and what I was putting out, the the need to kind of um, constantly feel accepted and approved of and wanted and um, desired, all of those things. I had large breasts and this superficial confidence from my breast implants, but I did not love myself. And that meant that I could not possibly attract the kind of love I wanted. Sitting here right now, I can tell you I am completely transformed from who I was with breast implants. And I think this is the absolute gift that the explant journey can offer you if you welcome it. I was listening to the Mel Robbins podcast yesterday, a woman who I just adore. She is on my vision board and you likely know of her. She's also an explant warrior. Uh, And she was also talking about confidence and self-love and relationships. And it just felt so aligned with what I had already planned to talk about today. So keep listening because I'm actually going to bring in some of those nuggets from her podcast episode and give you some fun confidence boosting action to take. A quick disclaimer, 
Please know I'm not a medical doctor and this podcast does not constitute medical or mental health advice. I share from my personal experience, research, and conversations with other people. If you're experiencing symptoms, pain, post-surgery complications, or mental health concerns, please seek care from your medical provider or surgeon. And please make any medical decisions in consultation with a qualified and experienced healthcare professional. One of the biggest struggles on the explant journey can be feeling sexy and confident in our new natural bodies. After years of having our breasts look a certain way with implants because we thought we needed to be more sexy, more desirable, more womanly, whatever it was, it can be challenging to accept ourselves after explant to get used to how our natural bodies look now. After looking over the answers to what hundreds of women fear on this journey, the number one fear is what my breasts will look like after surgery. Isn't it mind-blowing though? We're undergoing major surgery. We have families and our lives to think about. Some of us have horrifying symptoms and illnesses. And yet, we're over here worrying about what we're going to look like. Hey, I was right there too. I chose not to get a lift because I was scared of the scars and the damage to my nipples. And though I'm happy with my choice, I really am. I think that I made the right choice for me based on where I was at on my journey. Not getting a lift meant that I am left with my boobs sitting a little lower than I'd like them to be. I do have a little excess skin and my left side doesn't look as good as my right, except when I have my period. Oh, let me tell you. That couple weeks, like the week leading up to my period and the week of my period, and they're so full and perky and lovely. Oh my gosh. And then they just kind of deflate. (laughs) And yet here I am with imperfect breasts, proving to myself every day that confidence and sexiness and love does not come from my breasts. It comes from within myself. Explanting is not a journey to perfect breasts, although for some it might be and good for you. (laughs) Explanting is a journey to self-acceptance and self-love. Learning to love yourself for who you are exactly as you are. It is difficult and it takes practice. Believe me, I'm over here checking myself on my thoughts more often than I would like to admit. But when you can get to a place where you can say, I love myself and mean it, and you aren't only saying it, but you are showing it to yourself with loving actions and boundary setting and self-compassion and kindness, that's when the magic happens. Yes, the scars or the excess skin or the stretch marks or the indents or the asymmetry or the small breast size is there. And there may be days where you don't love what you see in the mirror, but the love you have for yourself as a whole helps it kind of fade into something much smaller, more insignificant. You know, most of the concern we feel about how we look actually has nothing to do with what we think about ourselves, but more so what we worry that others will think about how we look, especially your husband, your boyfriend, your romantic partner, and for the single breasties, the person you haven't even met yet. I think I've said this before, but um, this is often a good way for me to check whether it's a me-related concern or an external validation related concern, meaning I'm caring about what others are thinking. I ask myself, would I care about this if I was living alone on a deserted island? (laughs) Seriously, would I care if it was just me on an island with the beach and the palm trees and I've got, you know, food and I'm just, I'm there with myself and I'm even butt ass naked. Would I care? about this thing? Mm, Likely not. Most of the time, the answer is absolutely not. I wouldn't care. I would be concerned about like 
staying healthy, staying alive, staying fit, staying energized, being strong, um, being able to to get food. Uh, you know, am I happy? Am I? Do I feel good in my spirit? Um, like all of those things, I would be concerned about. But most of the superficial things, it's like, does my handbag match my outfit? Who really cares? You know, that's like that's something that I don't. It, it, I'm not impacted by that, but. I'm worried about what other people might think. Same with breast size, same with like all of these concerns that we have about what people think about us explanting. It doesn't necessarily change anything when you think about yourself on the deserted island, but it does shine a little perspective on things that can help you start to reframe some of the thoughts you're having. Because it's like, you know what? Mm, if it's not really a me thing, if I don't really care about this in my in my heart, in my soul, and it's not super important to me, then why am I putting so much weight on this? Why am I allowing this to impact my day, impact my life every day? Because let me tell you, it is time to stop letting your fear of what other people think impact how you show up in the world. Detract from how much fun and pleasure you could be experiencing if you didn't constantly have these thoughts running through your head. Imagine you're about to have sex with your partner. Yes, I'm going there right now. Okay, there, you're in the bedroom, you're about to have sex, but all you can think about is what is he thinking about my boobs? Is he looking at my scars? Does he find me sexy? Let me tell you, You are stealing your own orgasms. You are, and I know because I've done it myself, (laughs) you are robbing yourself of pleasure and fun. And you are robbing your partner of the opportunity to experience you in your sexy, magnetic, divine feminine. If you want to attract someone who loves all of you, if you want to be sexy in your partner's eyes, if you want to start showing up more authentically and confidently in your own skin, you have to start loving yourself. And that requires action because you are not just going to wake up one day and magically feel it. You need to literally rewire your brain. We have years of these beliefs built up inside of our brains that we have to like rewire, we have to undo. And this brings me to some of the gold that Mel Robbins dropped on me today in her episode about how to build real confidence. All right, here we go. Lesson one, to build confidence, you have to start being yourself. Learning to be yourself is what creates the confidence. Don't sit around waiting for the confidence. You got to break through the self-doubt by being yourself. And then you're going to see the confidence building. Confidence is not a feeling. Confidence is an action. Confidence is the willingness to try. And when you're full of doubt, especially if you move ahead and you do it anyway, you are building confidence. Lesson two, being your true self and loving yourself first will create true and lasting love with other people. You can't feel good enough for somebody else if you're not even good enough for yourself. And this is really what I'm talking about here as far as my own relationships and everything. You know, we are so concerned about our relationships with other people that we neglect the one that matters most. We're so concerned about what everyone else thinks about us that we neglect to really pay attention to what we are thinking about ourselves. We must heal the relationship we have with ourselves first. This is a hundred percent why I'm now in the most beautiful, loving relationship. He knows the love I have for myself is unshakable. My commitment to myself and my health and my quality of life is non-negotiable. He loves my faith. He loves my values and who I am as a person. And lesson three, learn to love what is unique about you because there is nothing authentic about 
constantly trying to fit in. If you are constantly trying to fit in, you are not a confident person. So we're looking to get to the opposite of that, right? By recognizing what's unique about you, you start to see what's unique about everybody. And suddenly there's room for everybody without comparison or judgment, just admiration for everybody. You're allowing space for authenticity and for everybody else's authenticity. It really does help break this comparison trap and uh, recognizing that you are special and there are so many more amazing parts of you to give your attention to and to give your love to and to allow shine through and your breasts and your breasts being unique as well. They deserve love. It's so interesting that we're all looking for confidence so we can be more of ourselves. And so we do all these things that we think will give us confidence, like get breast implants, get Botox, you know, buy new outfits, like whatever it is, a lot of it's very external. And yet it's actually being ourselves and embracing ourselves that gives us true confidence. A lot of people tell me I'm so confident and ask me what my secret is, how I make it look so effortless. People at work, women in this community, friends of mine, my mom. And the answer is it's not effortless at all. Most of the time on the inside, I'm shaking. I have fear and anxiety and nervousness, just like anyone else. Seriously, I have self-doubt and thoughts of imposter syndrome. I have feelings of not being good enough or funny enough or cool enough or sexy enough, like way too often. But I think the not so secret weapon is that I know confidence comes from doing, through taking action. Like Mel Robbins said, doing the things that make me uncomfortable, learning new skills, practicing things, taking care of my health, wearing the dress that stands out, walking into the room or the event alone, getting on the stage, going on the date, wearing the sexy lingerie, taking off the bra. The confidence always comes after you take the action, not before. And it's repeatedly doing the action, building the trust within yourself, making yourself feel proud and loved and safe that grows your true confidence that comes from within you. So don't wait for the confidence. That is the mistake that too many people make. Show up and create the confidence. That said, there is one more thing that is the foundation of confidence and self love for me. This is the thing that when I don't like what I see in the mirror, when I don't feel good enough, when I'm terrified of speaking up, when I'm stuck in the trap of comparison, it brings me back to love and safety and courage every time. And that beautiful thing is my faith. When I was originally planning this episode and I got super hyped up from listening to Mel's episode yesterday, she has that effect on me. I think I shared the episode with like three of my friends, four of my friends. (laughs) I had completely forgotten about this. But then I went to church this morning with my boyfriend. We go to Red Rocks Church in Austin and and we like to go to church every weekend together. And at Red Rocks Church, seriously, the pastors there are amazing. It's like going to a TED talk every weekend. It is so powerful. And I was reminded today that when you have faith, when you truly trust in God or a higher power, and you know that you are perfect exactly as you are, and that you are divinely chosen to be who you are and where you are right now, and that there is a plan and purpose for you. 
much bigger than you can even imagine, you start to look at yourself in the mirror differently. You start to show up in your life differently. You start to talk to yourself differently and treat yourself differently. And I didn't always have faith in my life. I actually found faith in 2017 and it changed everything for me. Just knowing you're not alone, that God will love you even if you don't love yourself in this moment, that the universe believes in you even if you are doubting yourself, that if you are lacking confidence, you can pray and ask for more. You can borrow strength until you cultivate your own. Knowing that we will stumble and we will fail and we will be imperfect and we will be rejected and feel fear and sadness and all those things, but it will be okay because the universe has our back. Breasties, we are here for a reason. Most of us that have been on this BII explant journey have a history of not loving or accepting themselves, not liking what they see in the mirror, not feeling good enough. The way you're feeling right now is a huge opportunity for growth. The challenges you feel when you look in the mirror are just there to show you that you can love yourself even more. You can love yourself so much more, I promise. And I'm right here on this journey with you, sister. Trust me, every day. (laughs) Every day I am telling myself these things. I am practicing these things. So We're going to talk more about self-love and building confidence on the podcast, but to take action on this today, I'm going to leave you with a few very simple steps to start shifting your mindset and leaning into self-love more. So step number one, I'd love for you to listen to the Mel Robbins podcast that I listened to yesterday. It's called How to Build Real Confidence, Seven Truths to Unlock Your Authentic Self. I've linked it in the show notes. I just want to share that with you because I feel like it's so applicable to what we all need to hear on our explant journeys before or after surgery. And I think it's going to give you some really powerful insights to hear it directly from her. You know, like I said, she she spits out seven truths. I just gave you a few snippets of what I took from her podcast. Step two, I want you to take an action to start showing yourself more love. This is about the action taking piece here. You can maybe try Mel's high five habit where you high five yourself in the mirror every morning. She explains the science of it in her podcast episode. It actually works, even though it feels super crazy at first. It starts to feel good. You can also use affirmations and start to shift your self-talk. Self-talk is a big one. I hear way too many of us talking really badly about ourselves and using words that we just shouldn't be using. Um, So starting to shift some of that so that we can change the beliefs that we have about ourselves and speak love into our bodies is a great place to start. Um, Maybe you just start nourishing your body better and getting in more movement, more exercise, um, so that you're, you're actually showing up for yourself in a different way. Whatever it is, commit to loving action. And if you want some accountability just for fun, you can actually text me now through the podcast. It's really cool. So text me the loving action you're going to commit to doing for yourself. So um, there's a a text link in the show notes on the podcast. You click that, send me a text, I will receive it. And uh, that will be great accountability so that you can really commit. I'm going to hold you to it. We're going to be in this together. And step number three, now this is optional, but for those who are spiritual and want to lean into faith, They played a song at church today that brought tears to my eyes, and I knew I had to share it with you as soon as I heard them sing, You Crowned Me With Confidence. Oh, those words were so powerful to me today, and I was like, I am about to record a podcast on confidence. This is perfect. 
So I knew that this was the theme song for this episode. I can't play it because I don't have the license rights to play it. So I've linked the song in the show notes. The lyrics are in the description of the YouTube video. Watch it to the end to hear some of the most beautiful angelic voices that you'll ever hear. Oh my gosh, so beautiful. And if this sings life and love and confidence into your heart the way it did mine, text me and let me know. Let's have some fun with this whole text message message thing. I want to make sure it works. Like I said, button in the show notes, send me a quick message and let me know how the song made you feel or how it changed your day today. (sighs) Okay, Brasty. That's it for today. That was a lot. That was a big one. (laughs) I had a lot to get off my chest. I love you as you are. And I look forward to being back here with you next week. In the meantime, come find me in the Empowered Explant Facebook group. If you have questions or you want to share your story with me and the other Explant Warriors. And if you need help and support on your Explant journey, your healing journey, I am here for you. Go to empoweredexplant.com and reach out to me there or email me directly at darna at empoweredexplant.com. That my email address is linked in the show notes. I know my name is not the easiest to spell, but I got you go. I will see you soon. Have a great week.